Well, how are things? Well, science tells us reality is a stupendous spatial hierarchy, a hierarchy of size. Inches, centimeters, feet, and miles for people, fractions of centimeters for cells, atoms, and billions of inches for nuclei. Our sun, little dot right there, travels at 160 miles per second around our galaxy and makes one trip in 240 million years. One of billions of galaxies is our galaxy. Space goes on until we reach 26 billion light years across. That's the size of our universe. So in the scientific hierarchy, you have quantity, size, and numbers. Compared with the pre-science hierarchy, which was all about quality, different levels of quality. I'm going to get back into that in a moment. With quality in the pre-science hierarchy, the more conscious you were, the more being you experienced, the more sacred was your life. If you had powerlessness, if you were profane, if you lived a evil life, you suffered. Whereas as you became more conscious and discovered meaning and significance and happiness and euphoria, and had more power over yourself and over your life, it's self-discipline. Your life became more sacred, had more quality to it. That's the pre-science hierarchy. Well, inevitably the two hierarchies had to collide because science requires only one ontological level, the physical. Don't get scared by the word ontological. All it means is the nature of being. Science is, by definition, limited in its scope. It's limited to the objective, to what is intersubjectively confirmable. In other words, we both agree this is, uh, try to think of a chemical, um, this is chlorine. We all, we, uh, all of us agree? Okay. Objective. It's not my opinion. We all agree. This is this is what it is. What connects to sense data is energy and matter. So the object of science is energy and matter. And if you have ever studied atomic theory, you will know that essentially everything is energy. And there's, in fact, very little matter in the universe. Most of what we, quote, see is energy. Science is also precise, mathematically expressible knowledge, it's predictive, and it augments control. You can control things more and more and more and see things in, you know, that are smaller and smaller and smaller, and for that matter, larger and larger and larger. But science is solely concerned with the physical plane of reality, and it is by definition. Science is limited to the sphere of energy and matter, the physical, that which is mathematically expressible. If you don't know that equation, that's fine. It's E equals mc squared. It's when Einstein comes on the scene. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Wow. Big change in understanding that we do not live in a mechanical universe. We live in a very strange universe somehow light, energy, and matter are connected in ways we're not really sure. We, we have an equation, but how did it get that way? We don't know. Well, what lies outside the physical plane of reality? If you can't measure it, what, what are those kinds of things? One of those things that lie outside the physical plane of reality are values. The value of pursuing knowledge is not itself scientifically derived. Becoming a scientist is a, a, a value 
but you can't make a scientific argument as to why you would be a scientist. You can make a logical argument. Purposes. What is the purpose of this particular activity, learning, that we're doing right now? Thinking. Is it because we're curious by nature? Could be. Could you get a scientific experiment to prove that? No, because you can't measure it. The meaning of life itself. Quality itself. Some qualities may be measurable. Color can be measured with a number. But the idea of quality itself is not measurable. Smith says it's as if scientists were situated inside a balloon. He can shine his flashlight on its interior, but he cannot get out to see it whole. Quality's out there, but the scientists must examine the things that are measurable. And quality is not one of those things that science can measure. Maybe somebody else can. In many ways, a scientific worldview is in principle impossible. Why? Because even though science has its place, Values, meaning, purpose, and qualities, those are the things, the sea in which man swims. We are constantly in a state of discussing values, of discussing meanings, of discussing purposes and qualities. That's what all this political discussions of the past few years have been about. Is it right to go to war? Questions like that. That has to do with values, meaning, purpose, and qualities. Science can't answer any of those questions. The world itself is not as science says it is. It is as science, philosophy, religion, art, and everyday speech say it is. Not science, but the sum total of man's symbol systems. That's the way. That is the measure of the way things really are. Now, I could take you back in history to the philosopher Nietzsche. I am going to give you a lecture on that that will be available in this section and in another section to come. But <clears throat> this, was, this would be a very um, interesting discussion that Nietzsche would like to, would very, very much enjoy participating in. Smith says the contention that there are no truths, save those of science, is not itself a scientific truth. And as we are insisting that it be so, it carries the marks of a religion, a secular religion. And if you think about it, you sometimes do see people yelling at the top of their lungs, not a sermon on why you're going to hell, but on why anybody who has faith is valueless. Because atheism is the only true scientific perspective. By the way, science was invented by, by a Christian, but that's a story for another day. So, as we search for the way things are, we find that um, there's a modern reduction of reality to a single ontological level. That is the result of, the, of science. But it's psychological, not its logical results. There's nothing in what science has discovered that controverts the existence of realms other than the physical. Reality exceeds what science can register, so we're going to have to look for other antenna to catch the wave bands it misses. Meaning, the convergent sensibilities of the greater number of the subtler speculative minds and of the great religious teachers that civilizations have produced. Since a qualitative hierarchy was arrived at independently, from the multiple heavens of Judaism to the storied structure of the Hindu temple, convergently by virtually all known societies, Smith says we are entitled to regard a tiered reality as man's central surmise when the full range of his experience, not just his, science, not just his physical experience, the full range of his experience is legitimated and pondered profoundly.
I am not saying that this particular picture is showing hierarchies of reality, but this is what has been the agreed upon hierarchy of quality of reality in every civilization that ever existed. The more consciousness you have, the more wisdom you have, the more being you have, the better life you have.